have both these phones pretty much since they came out. But for some reasons, I never got around to comparing their cameras. It's now been over 6 months since they are out and they have got a lot of updates improving the overall quality of their cameras. So I thought this was a good time to finally put their cameras to test. Hey guys, it's Saga and in this video, I'm going to compare the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro with the ones on this iPhone 14. iPhone 14 Pro comes with 3 cameras and a LiDAR sensor on its back. The main camera gets a 24mm lens, next one comes with a 13mm lens and the third one gets a 77mm lens which means it gives us 3x optical zoom compared to the main camera. A 13mm wide lens can also take macro shots. Its main camera gets a 48MP sensor and with some computational photography magic, this phone will let you take lossless 2x 12MP shots as well. So although we just see 3 cameras, they can actually take images at 5 different focal lengths making this the most versatile camera setup on any iPhone yet. Regular iPhone 14 on the other hand just gets 2 cameras on its back. That's it. No fancy tricks, nothing. On top of that, the main camera is just a 12MP sensor. Actually, this is the same sensor that we got on the iPhone 13 Pro. At the front, both get the same 12MP selfie cameras. Some of you might have this question that why am I even making this comparison? Isn't the iPhone 14 Pro going to be a clear winner in this comparison? Well, while the answer to that question might turn out to be yes, iPhone 14 Pro costs 50,000 rupees more than the regular iPhone 14 here in India. And with that big of a difference, it is definitely worth figuring out if the extra camera features on the iPhone 14 Pro are worth the extra price. With that, let us start with the daytime shots in good sunny lighting conditions. As I said before, I have had these phones for over 6 months and I have travelled a lot during that time. So images in this video are from a lot of different cities like Pune, Mumbai, Nagpur and even Hyderabad. Both the phones capture excellent amount of details in these bright sunny lighting conditions. 14 Pro gets a 48 megapixel sensor but these are 12 megapixel binned images. Now even as I zoom in on these images, we don't see either of them showing more details than the other one which is a huge win for the iPhone 14. I don't know if any one of you picked up on this or not but the lens on the iPhone 14 Pro is 2mm wider than the one on the iPhone 14. Which in simple terms means iPhone 14 Pro lets you capture ever so slightly more of the scene. Honestly, it is very hard to notice unless you are taking them or looking at these images side by side at the same time. In the end, I don't really think 2mm make that big of a difference to the resulting images. But there is a difference so I have to mention it. Sometimes both the phones capture slightly different color temperature and fight balance in their shots. This is an example of it iPhone 14's image looks a bit warmer while one from the iPhone 14 Pro has a bit cooler feel to it. The actual colors of this scene were close to how the iPhone 14 has captured it. Now these images go through the exact same image processing pipeline on both the phones so it is surprising to see this kind of variation in some of the images. These are indoor daytime shots and again we see both the phones doing a very good job with the details and overall colors of the scene. Speaking of the colors, other than in very few shots, they look mostly similar from both the phones. Yes, the colors are a bit more saturated compared to how things looked in real life and there is also a good amount of contrast in both the images. If you don't like these colors, you can turn on photographic styles on both the phones and make these colors look less saturated, reduce or increase the contrast, play with the warmth of the scene and so much more according to your liking. I have been saying this since the iPhone 12 that the dynamic range on iPhones is not that impressive anymore. Apple seems to have stopped working on getting this better or their smart HDR algorithm is just messed up and is not delivering half as good results as some of the competing Android phones. This is true for both the phones. Now they did well in these shots to some extent, where they managed to keep the exposure of the areas outside the window in check, but in the process, indoors starts looking a lot darker. I could see much more light in this atrium with my own eyes and both the phones just failed to capture that. In this shot, they managed to capture a lot of information in the shadows of the leaves. I think iPhone 14 Pro did slightly better with that. But at the same time, neither of them preserved the blue color of the sky in the background and just made it look white. On very few occasions, they managed to get good looking shots like this one, where the highlights and shadows both are kept in check and no areas of the shot is over or underexposed. I still think HDI is one of the areas where iPhones fall way behind the competition and Apple needs to step their efforts up. Just for reference, here is the same shot from the iPhone 14 and the OnePlus 11. Just look at the difference in the dynamic range from both the phones. Now we come to the good part. The part where the iPhone 14 Pro starts pulling its weight and differentiates itself from the regular iPhone 14. Here we have the 12 megapixel images from the main camera of the iPhone 14 compared with the 48 megapixel ones from the iPhone 14 Pro. Yes, from this far you don't see any difference between the two, but as soon as I zoom in even 2 to 3 times, you can see ones from the iPhone 14 Pro have so much more details in them. You can choose to capture the 48 megapixel shots in the ProRes RAW format, and that means these ones capture much better dynamic range. So if you want to capture more detailed shots, or if you know you will be zooming on your shots later on, iPhone 14 Pro is the perfect option for you. 
having a 48 megapixel sensor also means that you can take 2x digitally zoomed in 12 megapixel shots, which if you think about it are lossless shots on the center of the 48 megapixel sensor. All that being said, these 48 megapixel shots are huge in terms of storage space, and I mean really huge. A few of these images are even over 120 MB in size each. Which means if you take a lot of shots in this mode, your phone's internal storage will be filled up in no time. Plus without zooming in, you can't even tell that there are more details in the 48 megapixel shots. So for all these reasons, unless you are trying to capture images of some landscape or architecture, it is best to stick with the default 12 megapixel shots on both of them. Now one thing that the main camera on the iPhone 14 Pro really struggles with is trying to take close-up shots. Because it has a bigger image sensor and a much wider aperture, its minimum focusing distance is really bad. I think you can see it much more clearly in this set of images. Now I took the image placing both the phones at the exact same distance from the subject which is the spiral binding on this breakfast menu. You can see that iPhone 14 managed to set the focus on this point whereas the iPhone 14 Pro manages to set the closest focus on this point which is so much further away from its camera. Because of this, I found it very difficult to take close-up shots with the iPhone 14 Pro. I just walk up to a subject which I want to capture and more often than not it looked very blurry when I tried to take close-up shots. I would then have to move the camera a few inches away from the subject for it to set the focus. Now instead of doing this, I found that you can take much better close-up shots if you hit the 2x button on the viewfinder of the 14 Pro. This way, even if you are a bit away from the subject, you can click close-up shots which are just as good as the ones from the iPhone 14. If you have the auto macro mode turned on in the settings on the 14 Pro, the camera might end up switching to the macro mode when you try to take close-up shots and those images just don't look as good as the ones from the main camera. So just make sure that you have the auto macro mode turned off on your 14 Pro. Speaking of the macro mode, here are how those shots on the wide camera of the iPhone 14 Pro turned out. If you are close enough to the subject, these macro shots look really good. iPhone is one of the very few phones which will let you take macro shots while being so much closer to the subject. This is something iPhone 13 Pro could do as well, so when Apple ported the main image sensor from the 13 Pro to the 14, I was expecting to bring the same wide camera as well, but sadly the wide camera on the iPhone 14 is still the same one from the iPhone 13, so it doesn't get macro shooting capabilities. Here are how the wide shots from both these phones look like. They have a similar field of view, so they look pretty much the same. 14 Pro does get a hair wider aperture, but that doesn't make any difference or reflect in the daytime wide shots. I noticed that 14 Pro however captures a bit warmer wide shots, while the regular iPhone 14 captures slightly cooler looking ones. Again, although both of them put their images to the same image processing pipeline, it is interesting to see how both of them take a slightly different approach with the color temperature of the scene. The actual scenes were how they look in the iPhone 14's images. The conditions were not as warm as the iPhone 14 Pro is projecting them to be. As I mentioned earlier, the iPhone 14 Pro can use the middle part of its 48 megapixel sensor to capture 12 megapixel 2x zoomed in shots. And here are how they compare with the 2x digitally zoomed in shots on the iPhone 14. Now when I zoom in, we see 14 Pro's shot to have more contrast and a bit more details. But one from the iPhone 14 is not looking too bad either. In this particular set of images, the 2x digitally zoomed in shot from the iPhone 14 actually has more details in it. Just look at the lines under this text. So at least for these shots, the 14 Pro is not ahead of the iPhone 14. Next, let us check out the 3x shot from both these phones. 14 Pro does get a dedicated 3x telephoto lens, whereas the iPhone 14 will again have to rely on its digital zoom, as it doesn't even have a telephoto lens. Now for these set of images, ones from the iPhone 14 Pro are clearly much sharper. The digitally zoomed in ones from the regular iPhone 14 just start to fall off at this point. You can clearly make out that they don't even look that sharp and there is also a lot of noise in them at this point. Zoom in any further and they just seem to be unusable. Ones from the iPhone 14 Pro on the other hand still seem to be very sharp at this point. In fact, you can continue zooming in and even the 5x zoomed in ones from this telephoto camera don't look all that bad. Coming to the portrait shots. If you are a long time subscriber of this channel, you might know that I always prefer to take portrait shots with an iPhone and both of these are excellent at it. Other than the slight difference in the focal length, these portrait shots look almost similar from both these phones. iPhone 14 Pro gets a LiDAR sensor which is supposed to help it detect the edges better for these portrait shots and looking at these images, it seems to be doing a good job. That being said, even without a LiDAR sensor, edge detection from the iPhone 14 is just as good as the iPhone 14 Pro. Skin tones and overall colors look almost same in both the portrait shots and just look at how natural these shots look. Thanks to its telephoto lens, iPhone 14 Pro gets the option of taking zoomed in portrait shots. These ones look excellent as well, but because it is a 3x telephoto lens, you will have to be a bit too far away from the subject for taking these shots. I think that is a small price to pay if the images turned out this good. With that, let us move on to the artificial and low light shots. This is where the iPhone 14 Pro with its bigger image sensor and wide aperture should get comfortably ahead of the regular iPhone 14. I mean theoretically, because in real life, these images in the artificial light look almost same from the main cameras on both these phones. 
even if I zoom in, you will see the same amount of details in the images from both of them. To be fair, there was plenty of artificial light when I was taking these images. We might end up seeing a bigger difference when we get to even lower lighting conditions. When there is any sort of ambient light around, you can take very good images with either of these phones, and there is barely any noise in both their shots. When the light gets lower, we start seeing a bit noise in their shots, and if I zoom in on these images, we will start noticing a bit more details in the iPhone 14 Pro's images. But this difference is still very little to notice without zooming in so far. Once we get to even lower light, both the phones automatically switch to the night mode, and when this mode kicks in, the images have much more details and a lot less noise. Since the image sensor is big on both the phones, night mode shots don't take that long to capture. Again, if we zoom in, we see that iPhone 14 Pro's images have a tad bit more details. But honestly, when we look at these images side by side, 14 Pro's images don't look that much better in comparison. Given the difference in their price, anyone would expect the iPhone 14 Pro to be much ahead and take noticeably better images than the iPhone 14. But when we look at all these images, that doesn't seem to be the case. The wide lens on both can also take night mode shots, and these ones are definitely better from the iPhone 14 Pro. They have more light and details in them, while ones from the regular 14 look a lot darker and have a lot of noise in them in comparison. So those were all of the images which I had for you guys in this comparison. I took a lot of selfies too, but since the selfie cameras are same on both the phones and these images also go through the same image processing pipeline, the resulting images from them are almost identical. So I won't be talking too much about these selfies. Basically, these selfies look really good from both the phones. Actually, much better than any of the previous generation iPhones. We won't be spending too much time on videos either because they also look similar from both the phones. Details, video resolution and frame rate options are exactly same on both the phones. If something's different, then that is the amount of zoom you can achieve while shooting these videos. iPhone 14 can zoom up to 3 times, while the iPhone 14 Pro can achieve 9x zoom while shooting videos. So if you need to reach further while shooting images or videos, you will definitely love the iPhone 14 Pro. Other than that, frankly, I don't see too many differences in the images from both these phones. 14 Pro gets a few more image and video shooting options, but after looking at over 140 image and video samples in this video, I don't think the difference between the images from these phones is proportional to the difference in their price. In some of the cases, 14 Pro's images have more details and its ability to take macro and telephoto shots is definitely an added advantage. But other than that, images from both these phones look almost identical. I love to take images with my phone and whenever I go on a vacation, my phone is the only camera that I carry. Despite of that, if I was trying to decide between these phones, I would just go with the iPhone 14. I honestly don't feel like the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro are worth 50,000 rupees more. If you were trying to decide between these phones, after looking at all these image and video samples, which one would you go with? Let me know in the comments. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.